At this stage in time, we do not know. We need to do much more studies before we know. We are still uncertain how many of those mildly infected cases with very mild symptoms at the beginning, how fast is the immunity goes down. All right? Some people say that within three months, the antibodies will go down to a very low level. But is that true for everyone? How many percent of the convalescent or recovered patient will have a rapid drop of the antibody uh, by three months or six months? All these are still not very certain. But in this case, in this case that we found in Hong Kong, it is very clear. He's a young man. He is uh, fully immunocompetent with no underlying disease or chronic illness. And just after four and a half months, uh, this patient developed a second infection. And uh, although the symptoms are absent, there is no symptoms at all, but the blood test really showed that he has an inflammation with an increased uh, C-reactive protein showing that there is inflammation occurring. But the patient was largely asymptomatic. And that tells us that one thing. Maybe because of the first infection, the immune system was primed already. So uh, the patients or those uh, blood neutralizing antibody is very low, not detectable at the emission during the second infection. Uh, he still is able to mount a very good immune response and control the infection very rapidly. And by the five, fifth day, the fifth day of uh, the hospitalization, the patient's blood starts to have uh, detectable antibody. Uh, so this case illustrates to us one very important thing, is that in some patients, how many we do not know. Especially if the first episode of infection by this uh, new virus, new coronavirus, uh, is very mild, but the symptoms is very mild, then the uh, immunity can go down very rapidly, leading to a second infection. Uh, our case uh, illustrates this particular point uh, that the reinfection is definitely possible. But how big is this problem at this stage in time, we do not know. The first thing is that you probably, you must have two injections, you can't have one injection. And again, that uh, you, did, you need to do a lot of studies uh, to know how fast does this immunity go down. There's uh, not a small chance that the immunity will go down with time. In fact, many vaccines, uh, after immunization, the, the antibody really go down, such as the common vaccines that we're using, like tetanus, you know, Po Sang Fong. Uh, this tetanus vaccine also, the, after five to 10 years, you have to boost it in order that the antibody level is high enough to protect you. So it is not uh, unusual to receive two doses, and it is not unusual to have a uh, falling immunity as time goes by. It can be f very short, in the case of influenza, it's very short. But uh, we don't know about this new virus. Uh, uh, but the good thing is that uh, at least some of the vaccines that we are now having are using what we call the adenoviral vector. So you're using a viral vector, uh, the, the chance is that the immunity should be a bit longer lasting than the acute inactivated vaccine. Uh, which generally would uh, uh, generally uh, would would have the immunity the, a bit shorter, uh, depending on the individuals. But uh, I think in general the the answer is that uh, uh, even those who have history of infection by this COVID-19, even them, even they, would need uh, vaccination in order to have a prolonged period of protection. I think at this stage in time, we cannot make a conclusion. But we know from the patient's uh, respiratory samples, the viral load in the samples is similar to those with uh, first episode of infection. Uh, so you have a reason to believe that they may be also be infectious. They may not be as infectious as those who have a first episode of infection. But we can't assume it. So we, uh, my advice to all those who have uh, already one infection, who have recovered the infection, you still have to wear a mask, you still have to practice good hand hygiene, and you still have need to have social distancing. The reason being, first, you may be you may you may be reinfected. Uh, second, if you are really in reinfected, then you may still transmit the virus to your family members uh, who may be elderly patients who maybe have 
a very bad outcome after getting infected. So that is our conclusion at this stage in time that we have to be careful. Uh, don't assume that once you have one episode of infection, you are immune and you will not have a second episode of infection. And remember, if you have reinfection, a second episode, you may still be infectious and you may uh, be endangering other people, uh, who are especially those who are elderly or who have underlying medical illness.